It is a new era for West Virginia Mountaineers basketball, and one of the themes of yesterday's press conference with new head coach Darren DeVries was family. And I have just that on this episode of Hoops from the Hills. We're going to be talking to 12-year NFL veteran, brother of Darren DeVries, uncle to Tucker DeVries, Jared DeVries, on the other side of the intro on this episode of Hoops from the Hills. This episode of Hoops from the Hills is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre-loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC, Buick, and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory today across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com or come in today to the home of friends and family pricing, only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. What is up, guys? Welcome in. My name is Mountaineer Paul. This is another edition of Hoops from the Hills. Thank you all for the support last night's video with Former player personnel, director Jay Coots. It was a really, really involved video. We had several hundred people in the chat room. It's got several thousand views. We're so grateful to you guys for the support of this platform. That said, we've got an even bigger show, in my opinion, today. A new era of Mountaineer basketball, which ushered in yesterday, the way they did they handled everything. We've got a family member, which is a big theme of yesterday's press conference here today. And like I said, 12 year NFL veteran. Head coach, father, and uncle, Jared DeVries. Hey. How are we doing today, sir? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, and I was telling you, Wells Camera, love the gear. You said you got a shipment in. Uh, we can't we can't be enough thankful for that. Yeah, no, we're, we're very excited. Uh, obviously, don't know a whole lot about uh, West Virginia, but excited for, uh, obviously, my brother Tucker's opportunities. And uh, I, I you know, I couldn't be happier for him. Gotcha. So I'm assuming you're in Iowa or were you there in person yesterday? Uh, no, no. Um, my family's back home in Iowa. Okay. Yeah, that would have been, I mean, that would have been probably hard to get out for. But um, you saw it, I'm assuming. You probably watched the whole thing. Have, have you seen the, the stuff on social media that the, the universities continue to put out? I mean, they really rolled out the red carpet here. Yeah, it sure seems like it. Um, uh, I know that uh, Darren's very excited. Um, obviously, the university was some someone he they wanted highly. Um, so it, I'm, I'm just excited to get going. I, I wish basketball season uh, wasn't coming to a close and we could get going again. So is it safe to say you're his biggest fan? Uh, there's a lot of uh, fans, but uh, I'm, I've got to be up there to the top. Um, <laughs> we, we travel a lot. Um, I've already got my uh, flight mapped out to how to get to the, the West Virginia games. It sounds like it'll be an easy one, go through Chicago, into Pittsburgh, and drive on down. So um, right. we'll be there as often as we can. Especially when they're in Ames, right? Uh, that'll be easy. That'll be a really easy yeah. I, the ticket might be harder, but uh, oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I, you know, I saw, and it's been awesome. The Drake support, no sour grapes coming from that university at all, and the fans too. They knew it was time for him to step up, and it was just time. You know, uh, he's 48 years old. He's been coaching. Most guys with his talent level have already moved on. He's just that boy, and uh, which is really awesome because, as as you know. Uh, well, Bob Huggins is a different story because he's a West Virginian, but like John Beeline and guys like in the past had kind of used West Virginia as a stepping stone to get up to the blue blood of the blue bloods, like Michigan or North Carolina, things like, you know, things like that. One of the things that people talk about when they talk about your brother, Darren DeVries, is his loyalty. Can you talk about that? It, um, you know, his career shows loyalty. Um, you know, he stayed with Creighton. Uh, through two great head coaches, Dana Altman and Greg McDermott, um, was the longest tenured uh, assistant coach, um, had opportunities to go elsewhere, um, but, but uh, you know, stayed there in Creighton. Um, and then when he got his opportunity um, at Drake, um, third time's a charm, you know, he stayed there after an impressive run. Um, obviously, he's 
you know, he set all sorts of records, um, had great success there at Drake. Um, obviously, he met a lot of, of great fans, great people, but we did as well. And it, it is hard to see him go, but it, it, it was time for the next step. And and, and like you said, it, uh, it, it sounds like um, people are happy for him. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and the contract he got was very good. I felt like, you know, uh, it, it goes up every year, which is awesome. I think he's going to have a chance to really pay for a really good staff as well, what you need in this, in the big 12. Don't know about Richter or those guys, if they're staying or going, I know there's a big push for especially him uh, to, to stay there. At Drake, can you talk, obviously part of what happened there at Drake, can you talk about the assistant coaches a little bit there and, uh, yeah. Do you, do you know if there are there any plans for them to move along or stay? Well, I've got to know all the coaches very well over the time. We, you know, just because we're there so often and, you know, we go to practices and, and get to hang out behind the scenes. Um, yeah. Obviously, obviously a great staff. You don't do uh, things on your own in, in coaching. It, it, it takes a great staff. Obviously he has one. Um, you know, I don't know who he, he's hoping to bring along. Um, obviously, uh, you know, as a head coach, when you move on, you want your assistants uh, to, to have opportunities right. as well. And there's the coaching tree and, uh, you know, they're looking for the next opportunity. So I obviously wish them the best, uh, whether it be at West Virginia or another place or even Drake, because uh, Drake is a is a fine institution and uh, couldn't be prouder of, of, of that university. I'll tell you, man, it's been super impressive for me to see the outpour of support from Drake. You know, uh, there's already people that are, you know, waiting for those tickets and aims to pop up the, from the Drake side. Uh, and they're talking about, hey, look, we're all Mountaineer fans that day. And super, super impressive, man. I, I, it really is a classy, classy place. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, great, great fan base, great people, um, built wonderful friendships. Um, and it, it's just great to hear that there's no hard feelings that, that they're, mm -hmm. they're mountaineers and they're supportive. And that's just great. That's, that's good to Iowa people. And, um, that doesn't surprise me. And, and you know, West Virginians and Iowans, Brad, Howe, you know, I, I brought him up because he was born and raised in Iowa. He spent most of his adult life in West Virginia and working for the university, uh, obviously grew up a Hawkeyes fan. Uh, and he talks about it. He said, nobody would know better than I do, what it's like to move from Iowa to West Virginia. There are no more two similar states. And he believes that Coach DeVries will feel very at home in West Virginia. Uh, and certainly, as far as the blue-collar mentality, I think you can look at even the programs of uh, Iowa and West Virginia, and they're similar uh, in the kind of people that are there and the kind of people that work for the university. So I think it's going to be a smooth transition for Coach. Um Wanted to talk a little bit about you as well. Obviously, you played 12 years in the NFL, over 180 games, I think it was. Um, you had a lot of success and, you know, link with the Lions and I'm sure some other teams. Can you talk a little bit about that experience? And uh, we'll certainly talk more about Coach DeVries, but I don't want this. To, I obviously want to talk about you, too, a little bit. Yes. Uh, that's impressive, man. And obviously the Hawkeye connection, you, you always play for the Hawkeyes too. Yeah, I, I started my career at Iowa. I was grateful to have an opportunity there. Like you said, it, it's a it's a workman type uh, college and you just got to go to work. And that's, you know, we're from small town Iowa. They gave us a shot and we, we just went to work. And then fortunately uh, was able to uh, get signed on with the Lions. I actually played all 12 years uh, in Detroit. Um, Wow. Didn't have the success that they had this year. Uh, what a success story! Yeah, it was great. It seemed like the whole country was pulling for him. You know, if if I was playing your team, but uh, played under seven head coaches, learned a lot. Um, you know, had some injuries, and you know, couldn't uh, couldn't say enough great things about Detroit and the people there as well. Have you got a chance to meet Coach Campbell? Oh yeah, I played with Coach Campbell in 06, 07, 08. Um, so you're probably you're probably at least surprised that he's successful with this. Yeah, no, it's and what you see on TV is what you what he's a, is that isn't a show. Um, it comes across that way. He he's a hard working, intense dude, and that's how he, <laughs> that's how he played. Um, and you know, quite honestly, you know, he he was just a great friend. That's awesome, dude. Uh, 
didn't mean to talk about the Lions on today's show, but that's cool with me. Uh, I'm glad for the success of the Lions, man. That's talk about somebody who's been beaten down. And that's glad to see that. So, obviously, Coach DeVries is the only person that landed to Morgantown yesterday. What? I mean, it was all over Twitter yesterday, or X. Now, uh, Elon changed it. I can't get the memo in my head to keep saying X. But uh, the announcement right there in a the press conference that, that Tucker was going to be joining him in Morgantown. Now, it may not have been a huge secret. I think a lot of people made the assumption. But what a way to do it, you know? I mean, <laughs> I was like, that's just, that's just bold. Yeah, no, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I don't think anybody was too shocked about that, but uh, again, uh, cool unveiling as you would. He talked about being beat up the last couple of years and you know, the 21 points a game when you're beat up is damn impressive. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that. And, you know, uh, one of the things that I keep referring to Brad because he personally, he, he talked about how Darren's a tough guy. You know, and, and he's probably – the apple probably didn't far, fall too far from the tree with Tucker as somebody that will run right through your face. Well, uh, Darren and I were great friends, brothers and great friends, but there was a period in time where I had to throw him around a little bit. Um, you know, I may not have been on his, on his same page, but, uh, yeah, obviously <laughs> – uh, that comes from our upbringing. I, I really, truly believe that. I mean, uh, I I rebounded more basketballs for him. I I, even, I played basketball myself, but I had to be the rebounder because he was in this national free throw contest. And I mean, we just got up at five five thirty in the morning and 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 shot free throws all day long. And and it's just a workman type mentality that that we come from and. My folks are the same way. My mom's 70 years old, still, you know, working five to five and works her tail off. So it's just, it's just what we're about. Just, and even when I talked to Darren after the uh, disappointing game and he's like, man, I'm just ready to get back to work. Yeah. My, of course. Could take a day maybe to reflect a little bit. <laughs> but, Didn't even do that. I think things are moving quickly. One of the things that, they mentioned the press conference yesterday, which I had sources telling me this, and I, and I had relayed this information to people, but nobody wanted to believe me that for whatever reason, and, and sometimes a fit is just a fit, they mentioned it yesterday that, that Coach DeVries was literally giving other universities the cold shoulder uh, to see what exactly it was about this West Virginia job first. What do you think made him do that? I don't know if you've talked to him, uh, but I mean – I'm sure while this was going on, you probably had a couple conversations. What was it about the West Virginia job? Did you, did you hear any conversations about that? Or Yeah, I think it was just uh, he was really impressed with the people there, um, the resources, the facilities. Um, just when he was explaining uh, the opportunities, he was just so, so impressed with everything involved in West Virginia. And, like, you know, I, I just I think he fell in love. You know, one thing a lot of people are shocked by is that athletic facility. It truly, truly is a top five in the, you know, in the, in the country. Uh, and what, what we got lucky was we had some people that really believe Oliver Luck really believed in that when he was the athletic director. And this is before NIL, before the university had to worry about resources elsewhere. And so they invested in that. And obviously, Coach Bob Huggins raised millions and millions of dollars for his own practice facility. And that's why Coach DeVries said yesterday, hey, this is literally made for basketball. It's because Coach Huggins laid it out that way, you know, the practice facility and everything. But Oliver Luck was a big proponent and raised some of the money for the football side, which is really impressive as well, probably just as. So it's, it's a huge selling point with the university. It's something for sure that when you get, you know, you get you get guys deciding between places and the money's the same. You've got to have something that sets you apart. That facility is one thing that really helps. So I, I'm glad to uh, to know that that played a part because it's something we're proud of as West Virginia fans. Yeah, yeah. You, I, I I haven't been. I'm I'm looking forward to being there or getting there. But yeah, Dar Darren says it's impressive. The best he's ever seen. Yeah, it's it's definitely up there. So. And obviously, Coach Huggins, you know, who better than to design a facility than somebody like that? Um, 
apparently he and Coach McDermott are really close friends. And so, you know, of course, based off of that, you would assume that he's probably knows Coach DeVries as well. Uh, he said he was able to talk with the former coaches and stuff like that, which was really cool. And I just hope that, you know, obviously there are more people than just Coach DeVries that would make this decision. But I hope Coach Huggins gets a, a seat, you know, somewhere back at the university. Uh, certainly he's a larger than life figure that a lot of people idolize in the state, you know, uh, but hopefully he can be there in some way, state, some way, shape, or form, as long as it doesn't hinder what Coach DeVries has got going on. Uh, but yeah, Coach Huggs means a lot to a lot of us, but we truly are ready for this era of basketball and it's super excited about it. Man. We really are. And I've really looked into what Coach DeVries does as far as modern basketball. And he's really, you look at the analytics, you look at the on floor part of product. I, I really feel like this was what was out there, even over Dust, Dusty May. I truly, I'm not just saying this. I truly believe he was a better hire. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that if you, if you, you know, broke it down, you'd get a little Dana at Coach Altman and you'd get a little uh, McDermott and, and then a, a, a mix of his own flair. I know he respected the heck out of those coaches and, um, you know, they, I'm, I know they still talk, um, you know, uh, Coach McDermott always had the best out of bounds plays. And, and then when Darren got the job at Drake, I'm like, man, your, your percentage of out of bounds plays is off the charts. Yeah. Just, you know, they, they must talk, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what, what great coaches and what a run Coach McDermott is on right now in the tournament. Hard not to root for the guy, uh, especially at a university like Creighton, which I'll tell you what, he, he's close to Mark Few territory at Gonzaga. You know, like he's itching towards that kind of re well, not rebuild, but building Creighton to a place to where can't be denied. And, and you look at like Coach DeVries brought up the loss to West Virginia in the tournament all those years ago when he was an assistant at Creighton. Well, they were truly what you would consider a mid major at that point in time, like Drake. Uh, and where it is now in the Big East, uh, they could play in the Big 12, they could play in the SEC, they can do whatever now at this point in time. So, I mean, Hall of Fame stuff there from Coach McDermott. Yeah, they, they both those coaches have built a heck of a program. Oh, yeah, Dane Altman, too, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's got to be mentioned because he, he really got it started and, and handed it off to Coach McDermott. And, um, yeah, that's a, it's it's quite a program. It's great, great fan base. Um, man, they, they show up, and uh, they're just great fans. Really appreciate you for coming on today, man. I think uh, I've just got maybe one or two questions for you left, nothing major. But I just wanted to thank you really quick for doing this. It means a lot, man. And, uh, you know, two years ago when I started doing this, never did I think I would I would interview somebody that had played, played 12 years in the league for the Hawkeyes. So uh, sometimes I have to pitch myself because this is truly what I love to do. So thanks. You've been an awesome interview so far, man. I really do mean that. No, I'd love to come on another time. I'm I'm excited to meet yeah. you in person and uh, shake your hand. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, my brother actually is the one uh, that sent the the Twitter message, um, or excuse me, X message. Not my brother Darren, my brother Dusty. And he goes, "Hey, oh. are you going on this uh, podcast?" I go, "What What are you talking about?" He goes, well, "This This guy's trying to reach out to you." I said, "I didn't see it." So he <laughs> sent it to me, and that's how I I, I, I found out about it. And then I oh wow did some research and, <laughs> and, and messaged you back. But uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's good hookup. Yeah, you know, I, I looked at your account because I here's how I found out about you. Uh, I, I well, obviously once once I put two and two together, I do remember your career. But outside of that. I didn't know Coach DeVries had such an such an awesome family. I really didn't. You know, as big as it is, you guys travel together almost everywhere. So obviously, Brad knows them, and he was bringing that up on the podcast when I was doing research. You know, and mentioned you, and so I started doing research on you. I thought because I had the idea right then and there, I probably can't get Coach DeVries yet. I, I, you know, I've got a we've got a nice show here with, and my partner Coos is sick. By the way, I meant to say that. He was supposed to be here today. Hope he gets better. Um, but 
and I don't think Coach DeVries is in the car chip, but the next best thing is his brother. Uh, so I was excited about it, you know, and it's what it takes when you're like a podcast like this. You kind of have a, have outside the box ideas. So I just can't thank you enough for answering, man. Uh, I'll put a plug in for you when he, when he decides to call me back. I'm sure he's got okay. things going on, but uh, for sure. I told my dad last night we we're talking and, and he goes, well, your, your brother hasn't called me back yet. I said, well, don't feel bad, dad. He hasn't called me back either. So, you know, he's I'm, being treated I'm, like the star he is, man. These last couple busy. days. Busy. Yeah. Well, and they're really, they're about their head down there putting the work in. I just seen earlier, uh, kid, another uh, 20, just like Tucker average 21 points a game from Tennessee. Martin, uh, has got them in his top six. So, um, hopefully the country roads trust can, can, can pull that off because I watched his tape uh, right before we got on and very much like an at and right mm -hmm. uh, type player, really good finisher, really good, really good player. So hopefully they can land him, but if not, there will be others. And, and I, and if all else fails uh, and they can't get to, you know, the, I really do trust. That's the question I had for you. I'm sure it's a team effort. Uh, but when it comes to like Cal state Northridge, where at and right came from, that's, Obviously, there are Division One coaches everywhere kicking themselves for not seeing that guy. And I'm sure he had some people looking at him. Who on the direct staff do, did the scouting for players like that? Was it combined effort? Was it coach, is it Coach DeVries himself, or is it Richter or a combination, or do you know? Yeah, I, I think it's combined effort. I'm sure Darren had eyes on him. Um, and, you know, obviously he's got to have the final say. But, uh, you know, it, it's a combined effort. That's what – the makes them such a good staff, you know, Hey, I, yeah, go look at this person's tape, go look at this person's tape. And then you got to fit, it's got to fit the culture. Um, yeah. You know, it, you can't, maybe a guy scores 30, but he, but it doesn't fit the culture. And, and, and coach DeVries is a big culture guy, you know, you got to be able to work. You got to, you want to want to work. He and coach Brown are going to really get along too. I, I can tell because they, they seem like similar kind of guys. Uh, hopefully you get to meet coach Brown in the future. Very similar to uh, you guys in that your family atmosphere, family type, type people. Coach Brown is like one of the best Q and A type people you can ever have. He he truly is a, a leader of men. So hopefully you guys get to meet up with him as well. But thanks for coming on the show, man. It's been fun, uh, and we'll do it again certainly if you're wanting to. That sounds great. I appreciate it. Have yourself a wonderful day. You too. And guys, you can find Jared on X at how, what is it? Jared DeVries. Yeah. Uh, you can type in Jared DeVries on X and he'll pop right up. Give him a follow. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Hoops in the Hills. This episode is over. We are out.